sure everything's active here. Cool. Welcome back. Thought we'd just have a little bit of fun today, so let me start off by just playing some Blitz games and see where we go. I forgot that I'm going to need a link somehow to get to the, um, what's it, the uh, uh, Simul creation page. I'm going to need to find my way there somehow. There we go. Let me turn that down so you guys don't hear an echo. I think that'll work. Let's play the two nights, even though it's not necessarily my best opening. Oh. Um, we're going to go full fried liver, because why not? Other than it's the fact that it's refuted-ish. It's dubious to play it, but it's good fun. So we play it. Um, hopefully I'm not setting myself up to get fried liver in the upcoming simul event, because that would be hilarious, I'm sure. Let me take a brief look at what's on this. Uh, oh, I can't hit escape in the middle of a game. Alright. Um, Queen e4, if I remember right, c6 is necessary so I can pull my knight back to c7. Um... Yeah, I think I've got everything covered. A3 is a wasted move. White needs to castle. And tempting as this is, I don't think it works. Uh, what was the refutation of this thing again? Now would be a good time to remember it. I think it was knight c7, but... Where is the music? Um, yeah, when I can figure out like what non-commercial music to play on here, I'd totally go for it. Uh, I believe that artists should be compensated for their work, and I haven't found a way to make that work with Twitch yet. Even though I myself am a musician and have some recordings of my own, they aren't necessarily of the greatest quality. Um, I think I can just run this way. I think if Queen F5, I think I'm still surviving this somehow. Uh, certainly here I'm fine. As my knight covers b5, so... Yeah, now I'm just up... Um, yeah, solo piano radio is an excellent choice. In fact, the way I have this arranged here, people can listen to whatever music they like, and I don't have to play it. Um, but... Um... Yeah, sorry that I don't have anything set up for that at the moment. I should spend more time trying to find a solution for that. So I assume he's just going to castle. That's not castling. Okay. Um, I do need to develop these pieces somehow, so... I guess this is... Oh wait, he's intending bishop a4. Am I afraid of that? If he's got the guts to play it, I'll play b5. Alright, so didn't think he would play it. I don't think it makes sense for him to play it either. Um, so my bishop covers this square. This is exciting stuff, isn't it? So, uh, the idea is that once we get like 10 minutes into this, then we're going to launch the simul. Because uh, around 10 to 15 minutes in is when the announcement goes out to everybody that I've gone live. Um, so, we just develop the pieces. They have three pawns. I've got a knight. I think my knight dominates the three pawns, but we'll see. My king is more active, for sure. Alright. If he pushes another pawn, then we're exchanging rooks. 
Not the pawn I was thinking of, but a rook exchange might not be a terrible idea. Um, unless I can find a better idea, like, I don't know, this seems fun. Oh. Oh, that's clever. I could have seen that coming ten miles away, and somehow I didn't. Um, okay. How much havoc can I cause? There we go. There's our exchange. Right, so I could sack the knight for two pawns if I wanted to. Um, not sure that I want to. I think this might be best. And the question is where to move the bishop. I think this is okay. No, I need to keep my bishop. And this way my pieces dominate his pieces. And I can pick off this e5 pawn, or maybe the f6 pawn. Um, this is complicated. So can I do king d7 here? I think so, and I think it's forced. I think my pieces are too active for his pawns. Okay. Oh, I'm not really threatening to take on e5 this way, am I? Um, that's a check. Thank goodness for the increment. Alright, so... This is also a check. Pays to read your endgame books. In fact, I think I've seen a position very similar to this one before. And now I'm just winning. Um, let's anchor these in place. That was stupid. I should have moved my knight. I'm probably still better here, but if I had winning chances, that might have blown it. Um, okay, that's complicated. King takes, there we go. This is not well advised. Um, hmm. Let's see, let's step back in the square of the pawn and just take out the H pawn. This is embarrassing. My king is on exactly the wrong square for any of this to work. Um, yeah, I can concede this. God, that's embarrassing. If my king were on any other square, I could have drawn that. Um, bummer. 
So where did I blow it? Obviously going after his king was just stupid. Um, the first thought that occurred to me was knight g6 and knight takes pawn. This is too slow still. Um, am I even not winning this? I'm pretty sure I'm winning this. Yeah. Okay. A5 is the easiest way to win it. Um, king takes pawn is apparently also winning somehow. King takes a7. Okay, what's the deal here? Knight c4. Oh, and then I just round up the h-pawn? Do I have time for that? We have to chase the knight. Knight b2. Oh, right, right. Okay, so this is why king b7. So you don't impede your own pawn. But then black just promotes first. Okay, this is super advanced for this endgame. Um, so, had I had the time to figure that out, yeah, I could have done that. Um, so king f6 wins, a5 wins, knight c4, how does this do it? Um, I did at least correctly calculate that knight chasing this h-pawn was too slow. It's just, I didn't calculate any of this correctly. Oh, and this only transposes. Apparently knight b2 is winning, which is nuts. Uh, what about a4? Okay, so if I like play a slack move, like a bad move here, like king f7, this um, might not be winning. Yeah, the fact that this says plus or minus 5.1 means it's not quite good enough to seal the deal. It's good enough to like make Stockfish prefer Black's position over White's, but there's no forced win here. Okay, but yeah, what I calculated in the few seconds I had left on my clock was uh, Knight F3. Um, now, obviously, this still transposes to all the other stuff. Um, but how? King f6 wins. h4 wins. Oh, did I miscount this pawn race? Wait, what's going on here? a6, h3... F7 delays things a move. I mean, we could throw that in. No harm, no foul there. King B8. Oh. Okay, so yeah, if you saw this fork, like, um, what was that? Move 41, here we are, move 47. If you saw this six moves in advance, the fact that you would have this knight D4, knight c6, or knight e7 to knight c6 pawn, um, knight forking the king in the pawn, if he plays king b8. And if he plays king b7, you instead have this check. I mean, this is all stuff that you can calculate and stuff that's in an endgame book, and I've read about this position. But applying it six moves in advance is a little bit challenging, especially for a warm-up game. Uh, yeah, this is Lee Chess. So I did have a win back here. Like, every move wins. Um, I found a losing move. <laughs> well, this doesn't, can't lose immediately, but still. Okay, not my greatest moment. Wow. That is embarrassing. Even for a blitz game. I'm supposed to know my end games. And here I am boasting about how I've read a lot of endgame books, and I certainly have, and I know a lot. But that required a six-move deep calculation just to get to the position where an endgame assessment can be done. I wasn't up to the challenge there. Which is too bad. I 
All right, so how did we transpose? Oh, wait, no, this is just a Berlin. This is something I've played a zillion times, even this particular sub variation. Um, although usually I play f6 and f5 and blitz. Um, I've done some opening research at some point and was advised that knight f6 is the standard idea here. Not saying that it's necessarily much better than what I usually play with f6 and f5, but um, it's supposed to be better somehow, just because it's difficult for white to develop. Okay, so the most tempting thing here is bishop g4, which just exchanges a knight for a bishop, unfortunately. Um, wait, can I undermine the d-pawn? If so, I've just equalized. Perhaps I'm better. Hey, welcome, everybody. In a few moments here, we'll have ourselves a simul. It'll be good fun. Um, where do I put my bishop? Hmm. Okay, let's stop this bishop from dropping in on g5. White's development is still not the greatest. <laughs> yeah, it's a great style. I like it. It's good fun. Um, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a tiger by the toe. If you hollers, let him go. I'll just put it there. Okay. Um, so he's threatening queen b3. Uh, so now what? Do I just play b6? Knight c6, queen d7, and something? I think I'm fine. b6 and queen f3 is unpleasant. Um, bishop e6 looks okay. He has an immediate threat, which he probably won't pay attention to. Um, like I was saying. Okay, now do I want to set another threat, like trying to play bishop b4, skewering this here? Obviously he's trying to sack on h6 and trying to spook me, and I think it's working. I think I'm just going to run over here and hold on to my h-pawn. Alright, so he holds on to his a-pawn. Exciting stuff. Here, let's put the bishop on a better square, even though that gives up f5. Okay, that's just weird. That, you just don't do that. Um. Hmm. I feel like I should have something here, but I've botched my position, so it's not here. Oh, goodness. I can't believe I'm playing knight d7 here. So the idea is I want to activate my queen, but to do that I have to get the knight out of the way. And all the forward squares for the knight are taken away, so I have to retreat. But um, I'll be developing soon, so none of that matters. My opponent could play queen to d3 and then back to d2. Huh. Didn't know you could draw arrows that countered each other like that. That's pretty cool. Um, so his big idea is taking on h6. Um, hmm. Do I just let him do it? Could that be fun? Mm, not like that. Okay, whatever. I'm going to stop him from taking h6. In part because my queen protects this g5 square. So even if somehow his rook did make it over to h3, I still have g5 defended um, by my queen. I'm down 40 seconds. This is not my finest moment. Um, okay, that's a bishop.
Oh, he's got Rook H6 immediately. I did not see that. Even here he's got Rook H6. Oh, good gravy. What have I done? <laughs> oh, this is not good. I was intending Queen F6 here, and it was beautiful except for one little detail. Oh, okay, what do I do? How do I get out of this? Oh, good. Okay, so we're doing this, and I'm getting made it anyway. Because now he's got Queen H6. I only looked at Rook H6 and Knight H6. Wow. Okay. Well, this is less than ideal. Yeah, we'll just concede that. All right. Jeez. Okay. Well, that was a fun little warm-up. Um, here, let's try playing the white pieces for a change. Uh, I can play with this board because, like, for goodness knows how many years I played with a 2D board, and I'm tired of playing on a 2D board. This takes some practice to get used to, but it's not bad. Sorry if it looks a little hideous on the stream. Um, okay, we're gonna just avoid mainline theory and try to get into an endgame. Because surely I can't blow two endgames in the span of 15 minutes, right? Surely I've got to get at least one of these endgames right. Hey, what's up? Just playing some chess, losing some endgames. We're gonna pull back this way. Alright, this can't be too bad. You missed entering. Oh no, no, no. Um, this is not the simul just yet. Uh, given that the stream has just started, we're going to do the simul soon. See, unlike some streamers who will, like, say, I don't know, put up a schedule in advance and tell people to join up the simul um, and let them know days in advance that it's happening at X and Y hour, and then sometimes they're on time, sometimes they're late, sometimes they're early, whatever, I just say, you know what, we're going to do it whenever it happens, and... Um, I just play some games at the beginning of the stream, and then we create the simul. So it's a little more ad hoc that way, but I figure if I give people a few minutes notice at the beginning of the stream that it's going to happen, uh, at least some people should show up. Alright, this is disgusting on my king's side. My king is just going to get barbecued. Um, we're not going to get into an endgame. But if we dig in an endgame, my knight would be totally better than his bishop. But we're not getting an endgame this time. Uh, no, you can't push that right away. That just... No, absolutely not. That doesn't work. Okay, show me how it works. Because I'm not a believer. Queen h4? Or is he going to play f3, which I think would be the best try here? <coughs> Pardon me. Okay. So. Let's see. How do I do this? I just have to find a way to defend this knight. Um, hmm, I thought I had queen f2. Because I don't have queen f2, this is wandering into hideous territory again. Switch to Catalan to avoid all this. Hmm, not a bad idea. Um, 
Okay, so I think I've slowed down his attack a little bit. I'm not actually down a minute on the clock this time either, so this can't be too bad. And it seems he's taking a second to think about his move, so maybe I've actually played okay. Alright. Um, okay, we're going to barricade the F-pawn. And then attempt to queen exchange again. Yeah, I think he did not play this attack nearly as strongly as uh, was possible. I think this attack could have had a far better result than it did have. Um, that said, I'm not completely out of the woods yet. Hmm. So we're actually going to get the end game that I said would be fantastic. Um, and I'm not so convinced that it's as good as I advertised. Okay, well now it's just awesome. No, you can't... This can't be any good for black, can it? Well, I'm sorry, this, this shuts down black's attack so white has finally equalized. Um, which you know is the goal for white when he's playing a game of chess to equalize. Okay, so... Um, okay, rook h3 is not so good. Most moves are preferable to rook h3 here. I need to activate my rook, so he's going to play rook hg4, and I'm going to play rook f2. And my point is I want to try to get my other rook to h1. As long as his king's on f7, he can't play f3 with tempo. But once he moves his king away, now that he's lined up both his rooks on the g-file, I play my other rook back to the second rank. And it takes him multiple tempi to activate his stuff. Um, meanwhile, I'm going to try to invade my king on the king side. I mean, objectively, this is just drawn, but um, I'm counting on him making some sort of mistake. Okay. My rook should not be on f2. Putting my rook on f2 is asking for a disaster to happen. Um, so, I don't know, I'll play it over here or something? Hey, what's up? How's it going? We're going to... Um, I'm going to create a simul soon. Alright, so this is my big idea. It was rook d2. Everything is defended for the time being. Um, YOLO? Maybe? Alright, I'm too curious. We have to find out where this goes. This is just stupid, but we're doing it. Um, okay. So next... I want to take here? No. I need to take an a6. So, yeah, I should not have gone into this, but I was bored. So... That's the death of me in this endgame. Um, unfortunately, there's no stalemate trap here. 
At least none that I'm seeing. Okay. Oh, right. He's got the mate in one thingy. Oops. I somehow thought that that wasn't mate. Okay. Well. Oh, boy. What a day. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I would play a, a rematch, but I actually have to create a simul here, because we've got an audience, so we have to keep the audience entertained. Uh, I don't see any GG buttons or anything, but um, good game, well played, etc., etc. We're going to create a simul. Um, where do I go to create that? Simultaneous exhibition.